Sorry. So here with the with the Touch GFX Lab, right here, the ST. So hi, so who are you? My name is uh, Martin Kelsen. I'm a senior software developer with uh, Touch GFX. So uh, what is Touch GFX and where does it come from? So uh, Touch GFX is a, a graphics library uh, with a, a designer to generate uh, graphical applications for embedded devices for STM32. So since the acquisition of TouchGFX uh, last year, uh, TouchGFX is now locked to STM32 uh, micros. So that means uh, the STM32 microcontrollers can get this tool? Yes. And what is this, an application that runs on Windows? And uh, It is a Windows application, so the dream is that uh, it should be cross-platform, so like Linux and, and uh, Mac OS, but it's uh, I don't know, but yep. uh, it's uh, currently it's uh, written in C-sharp and Windows Presentation Foundation, yep. so <laughs> it doesn't run on, on mono or anything. So, uh, so it, it on a Windows computer, computer and then uh, do everybody get access to it, or is like a... It costs money, or no? So since the acquisition, uh, TouchFX is free since 4.10. It was uh, locked to STM32. So basically, you can just download it from uh, from the web. So for instance, uh, here through uh, this link, get TouchFX. You can uh, you can reroute it to the st.com website. You can uh, download it from here. And so it's a nice, it's a really cool app. It allows to do 3D on a microcontroller. Well, I, th I mean, not 3D in the sense. I mean, 3D in the term in the sense that we have a texture map as to do rotation and stuff. But it's not like pure 3D OpenGL because that's not supported by STM32. But to do gr cool graphics. Yeah, cool graphics. So uh, the story is that that since uh, CubeMX 5.0, we also integrated inside CubeMX, so you can actually select CubeMX or TouchFX from within CubeMX which will generate a uh, TouchFX project for you, with, along with all the BSP, uh, device drivers, etc. Uh, so you have a complete project that you can uh, use with TouchFX. So how does it look like a, a, a device that has it running? You can, uh, so here, it's just a, a simple application uh, doing a screen transition with a cover effect. So it has a nice touch effect. Yeah. And a touch, and a nice sliding motion. It's smooth. It looks yes. like it's an advanced device. Yeah. So, so the original uh, concept of TouchFX touch was to uh, give people the option to create smartphone-like graphics on 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 resource-constrained embedded devices, uh, running at like a factor ten slower. Uh, so, for instance, in um, this case, uh, you could run uh, really uh, bad-looking graphics on this device. Uh, something like uh, what graphics? Like, like something like this, for instance, is uh, something developed by a graphics artist. So it just makes the whole application look really good. You could run, uh, if you just had a box or something, no one would care. So you need... So you need a graphics artist. You need the graphics artist to kind of uh, make things look good, yeah. So like the different buttons, the different yeah, yeah. things that happen? This is a professional graphics artist. You could do something in paint, but it wouldn't be very impressive. So even Graphic if, designer? Yeah. Just a graphic designer, right? Yeah, like a professional graphics uh, artist uh, doing his stuff in Photoshop uh, and then handing over the graphics to the application developers. Is, uh, the files have to be compressed? It happens through your app? Yes. No, it's just so what happens is that uh, you know the graphics artist would uh, work in Photoshop, then extract some of the, uh, the images as maybe a PNG. That uh, image file would get translated by uh, the uh, image converter by TouchFX into uh, like a C++ array of pixel data for that particular image format. And that particular uh, array would get placed maybe in external QuadSpy flash, and then that uh, data will get copied by the Chrome art on the uh, STM32 device uh, from the external QuadSpy flash into the frame buffer using hardware uh, alpha blending. And it says, uh Parallel LCD, MIPI, DSI, uh, these chips, how many chips are supported? So in TouchFX? Yeah. Yeah, so you can see here, if you open up, start a new application with the designer. So basically, this is the uh, uh, range of support we have. So we support the L4, R9, we support the uh, F4s, both with uh, just the SD controller, but also with the DSI controller. Uh, we support the uh, F7s with uh, parallel RGB or uh, DSi the screens. So when you select something from this uh, range of templates, basically what you'll get is something that is guaranteed to work 
Nice, it just works. So, so and it's a uh, free Artas? <laughs> yeah, by default we've always provided free Artas and also if you generate your project with Cubamax, that's what you get. You get a uh, free auto task. It, it with what, Max? Yes. The free, uh, so when you generate a project with Cubamax, yeah. you, you get one free auto task that runs your GUI. Okay. And uh, so it, can you say a little bit more about the, the background of the, the touch GFX? Uh, what's, where are you based? So we're based in Denmark, so it's the only uh, Danish uh, ST site right now. So We're in Copenhagen? Or we're in, in Aarhus. Uh, we came from a company called Raupner Graphics, uh, and this was acquired <laughs> by ST last year. And uh, what, what, is, uh, what was that company? Sure. It was only working with this, uh, an ST product? Yeah, so originally the project was developed uh, at Mjolnir Informatics. So Mjolnir is actually uh, the name of Thor's hammer. So we created a sister company called Draupner Graphics, and Draupner is the ring of Odin. Okay. Uh, so it's all themed in uh, Nordic mythology. Uh, and then ST acquired that company last year. And uh, is, it, uh, is this uh, adoption of this technology now accelerating? More and more people are using it? Yes, so, so with can the... We, uh, can we look over there? Is this related? Sure. It's all running on this. Sure. So uh, let's go around here. So this is a whole bunch of uh, examples running on it. Yeah, so you can see here, this is a kind of a, a complex game running. Parallax effects, lots of uh, pixels getting moved uh, to display. So basically what you can see is the MCU MC load is really low. But by uh, disabling the Chrome art, uh, the MCU load will suddenly rise to maybe 80%. So that's what uh, TouchFX does well. It's efficient rendering of, of uh, screens to uh, frame buffer using uh, hardware acceleration if, if available. So for, for most of the STM32 devices, it's the Chrome art, which can do, uh, you can copy data from the uh, um, memory map, reversible area, uh, to a frame buffer using hardware of the yeah. Here, yeah. And, and this one? So this is just uh, another demo. Um, just to show you something. This is a texture mapper running. Uh, yeah, so you have scroll wheels, different things you can try. Out here. Um, and uh, when you when you and uh, oh, this one can I check? Yeah. So it's for smartwatch. Yes, smartwatch. So that's the uh, L4. It's compared to L4, low power. Okay. So it's about bringing touch UIs to embed it. Yeah. And. Um, uh, when a customer is interested to do this, can you refer them to graphic designers that are great at doing stuff? Sure, for this, we can. Or? So we so we have actually uh, here we have resources. We have these implemented services. So so these are the uh, partners that we have. These guys do uh, like, um, display modules. These guys can do both implementation of applications as well as UX and. Uh, and uh, graphics. And some of these guys, they do uh, like, um, what's it called, the, 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 the hardware, right? Uh, these guys do hardware, these guys do uh, mostly application development, and these guys can do application development. It's a kind of a different uh, story for each implementer. Nice, and yeah. so they can get people to market faster. Sure, right? yeah. So in the old days, we would do some of this stuff, but now uh, we just have partners who do that. So we can focus on the actual framework and developing that. Nice. Yeah. So the framework itself, as well as the designer. So, uh, so version 11, 4.11 of the designer will be out soon. It's already done. So what's new with the new, the new version? Yeah, so what's new in 4.11 is uh, something like uh, Thai support, la Thai language support. Uh, support for 8-bit frame buffers, so you can uh, run it on, uh, for instance, like in 6-bit display. Uh, we have a new widgets from the framework available in design, like a texture mapper, uh, and uh, uh, digital clocks, analog clocks, lots of performance improvements and bug fixes. So and this is still 410. Yeah. So it's coming out just uh, shortly. Shortly, but so now we have to kind of uh, align with other products in the STM32 uh, uh, ecosystem. <laughs> so we need to align with Cubamax and Cube Firmware Pack, so we do not uh, decide anymore when to release things.